Hi, welcome to the Russell E. Larson Agricultural Research Center out here at Rock Springs, Pennsylvania. We're just a couple miles from Penn State University's main campus, and this is the site where we perform a lot of our field-based studies to investigate some of the physiological adaptations in root and shoot tissue that help major field crops like corn and bean perform well under drought scenarios as well as soils that are limiting in both nitrogen and phosphorus. Now behind me here you can see some of these specially managed fields we have to mimic uh, a terminal or in intermittent drought scenario. These are what we refer to as rainout shelters, and they function essentially as large greenhouses that can move over our experimental plots here along these rails every time a rain, vent a rain event occurs. Then as that rain event terminates, these shelters will move back off of the plots and allow normal climatic conditions to exist above these fields. So we get normal evapotranspiration rates occurring when these structures are off, but we can move them over to inhibit rainfall. The movement of these rainout shelters is automated by rain sensors that are programmed to move the shelter over the field when they detect rainfall and off the field when it dries. To help us monitor soil moisture throughout our fields uh, as we impose drought and as drought progresses throughout our field trials, we utilize what are called time domain reflectometry probes or TDR probes. And essentially these function by, we hook these into a computer system with some software that sends an electrical pulse down these cables and into probes that we have buried at various depths throughout the field. And the resistance of that waveform that goes down this cable and into the soil tells us something about soil moisture. Additionally, we use other methods like gravimetric soil moisture that we collect using these types of uh, cores where we can actually collect physical soil samples, bring them back to the lab, and get information on gravimetric water content by weighing the fresh sample, uh, drying that soil sample out, and then weighing it again to see how much water was in the original sample when it was freshly collected. Estimates of above ground shoot biomass can be determined from stem diameter taken at the base of the shoot just above the emerging brace roots. For this measurement, we can use a caliper. Similarly, record of plant height also correlates strongly with above ground biomass. Time of flowering and the anthesis silking interval can have significant effects on yield under drought stress. Consequently, diligent record of days to flowering and the time between pollen shed and silk emergence for all the varieties being evaluated is essential. To help us measure parameters like carbon assimilation, transpiration, stomatal conductance, and leaf temperature, you can utilize this instrument here, which is known as the Lycor 6800. To help us better understand the mechanisms of drought adaptation that may exist among the different varieties that we're evaluating in our drought trials, we can utilize metrics like leaf relative water content. For this metric, we would take leaf punches throughout the newest fully expanded leaf in the canopy of a given variety, like so, and taking several of these punches, storing them in these airtight containers, we will take these back to the lab, get the fresh weight of these discs, and then suspend these discs in deionized water so they can absorb additional water that they may have expelled through transpiration. And then we will dry and reweigh these samples so we'll get the fresh weight, the turgid weight, and the dry weight of these samples. How efficiently different varieties utilize the water that they take up through the root system is largely dependent upon the anatomy of their leaves. We collect leaf anatomy samples for evaluation back at the lab to explore different components like stomatal density and stomatal size on the surface of the leaves, 
as well as a lot of the anatomical features that can be visualized within the leaf. Leaf samples collected for anatomical analysis are cut to include part of the midrib, as well as the leaf lamina, and preserved in 75% ethanol. To help us understand the degree of stress that plants are experiencing in our drought trials, we utilize this tool here, which is known as a pressure bomb, or a Scholander bomb. Now to understand how this device works, you need to understand something about how water is transported through plants. So just a brief overview, uh, as plants are acquiring water from the soil through their roots, they're transporting that water through a series of hollow cells or tubes which are known as xylem vessels. And that water is transported in a continuous column of these xylem vessels from the roots to the stems and then into the leaves where that water is then transpired out of the stomates during photosynthesis. So as water is transpired out of these leaves and lost out of these leaves as photosynthesis occurs, water needs to be continually pulled out of the soil through these xylem vessels in the roots, in the stems, and in the leaves, and then eventually out of the leaves. So this negative tension that exists throughout the entire plant can be measured using this device. Now under drought stress, where there's less available water in the soil, that negative tension that exists throughout the entire plant where they're trying to pull up that column of water from the soil to the roots to the shoots to the leaves is more severe than under more well-watered scenarios where there's uh, more available water in the soil and uh, there's less negative tension that exists throughout this column of water. It's more easily able to transport that water from the soil to the roots to the shoots to the leaves. So this device is able to measure that negative tension uh, by taking a leaf sample and placing it in a uh, pressurized chamber here. And what we're measuring is the amount of pressure that it takes for xylem sap to be extruded out of a cut surface of that leaf, uh, and the amount of pressure that it takes for that sample to extrude sap out of the cut surface <clears throat> is equal and opposite to the amount of negative tension that exists throughout that entire plant. Under circumstances of drought stress, shallow soil horizons are the first to dry, and often plant available water can still exist at depth within the field even as drought progresses through the season. Therefore, crop varieties that have deeper distribution of their roots within the field can access these water reserves later on in the season and often perform better in terms of yield compared to varieties that have a shallower distribution of the root length within the soil. To help us understand the genotypic differences that exist among different varieties we're investigating in terms of the root length distribution by depth, we utilize soil coring, where we can place one of these soil coring tubes into the soil uh, and extract a soil core that is contained in this metal tube. That soil core sample is then transferred to one of these uh, sample holders and we'll take this back to our lab at Penn State and we'll divide this up into increments by depth, wash away the soil from the root length that's been captured within this soil core. And that helps us to understand how different crop varieties have differences in root length distribution by depth. And then we can relate that to how well these different varieties perform under drought scenarios in the field. Since roots are directly responsible for soil resource capture, our group is particularly interested in genetic variation for root traits that may affect how efficiently different crop varieties acquire and utilize water under drought. To measure different components of root architecture and collect samples for anatomical analysis, roots must be excavated and washed in the field. After soil is washed from the root crowns, shoots are separated from the roots and subsequently dried for measurement of above ground biomass. Here we can see some of the genotypic variation that exists for maize root system architecture. 
The root crown on the left has a higher degree of gravitropism in its nodal roots, which can provide benefit under scenarios of drought stress by placing roots deeper in soil domains where water is more available. The root crown on the right has a lower degree of gravitropism and consequently will have shallower distribution of its roots and less access to water at depth. Here we have a fresh maize root crown that was just excavated from the field, and we've taken it back to the lab to collect root samples. We will subsequently look at the anatomy of these root samples to identify genetic variation for anatomical traits that may affect how efficiently different varieties acquire and utilize water under drought. For example, genetic variation for anatomical traits, like xylem vessels, may affect how well different varieties transport water through the plant, and ultimately may impact yield under drought stress. Mm -hmm.